So this is a sort of revisit of an old problem which will be solved by using uh, some uh, new methods from the theory of backward stochastic partial differential equations, which I hope to explain next. So let me first describe what I mean by the filtering problem. So I have a pair of processes. So I start with a sort of simple problem. Later I will switch to a more slightly more complex situation. So I have a, a, a pair of processes X and Y. <coughs> so X solves a stochastic differential equation, and Y is a sort of function of X plus noise. And, and you see there is correlation between this noise and the noise driving the X equation. So X takes values in Rd, Y in Rm, V and W are two mutually independent Brownian motions, respectively K and M dimensional. And this is defined on the probability space omega Fp, equipped with a filtration Ft, and all processes are assumed to be uh, progressively measurable, or if you like, adapted to the filtration Ft. Okay, so now I denote by script uh, by uh, yt the filtration generated by ys from s, s running from 0 to t, and we wish to compute or characterize the conditional law of x given y. So if you like, you, you assume that you observe in continuous time the second process, but the first process is unobserved and you want to, to get as much information you can on xt given all observations of y between 0 and t. OK, so now in order to uh, <coughs> tackle this problem, the simplest is to make to introduce a change of probability measure. So uh, I define zt to be the exponential of integral of h dw minus one half h squared ds, <coughs> and I define a new probability measure b tilde, which is such that the random Nikolin derivative of p of tilde with respect to the original measure p, restricted to ft. This is just zt. Okay. And I define, if I define z tilde t to be the inverse, one over z t, then of course, this is the uh, reverse radon nicodym derivative. Okay, so uh, now, now I, I formulate the so-called kalyan poch triebel formula, <coughs> which is rather easy exercise on conditional expectation which says that if you want to compute the conditional expectation of phi of xt given yt, then you can compute it under p tilde, but then you have to introduce your Nikolin derivative <coughs> d tilde t, and you, had, you have to normalize by this quantity. Okay? So now once you have this, uh, so under the, the the fact is under the new measure, uh, p tilde, yt is a Brownian motion independent of vt, and under p tilde, the measure valued process pt defined by, if you like, the numerator of this, of the right hand side here, so pi t of phi is e tilde z tilde t phi of xt given yt, then this measure valued process solves the following stochastic partial differential equation written in uh, linear SPDE, which is written like this in weak form. Okay, so pi t of phi, pi zero of phi, <coughs> plus integral from zero to t of pi s of a s phi d s, plus the sum from j equals one to m of pi s of b j s phi d y s. And where uh, with a is the matrix G, G tilde plus G bar, G tilde bar. So if you remember what I had here, so uh, in fact, the operator, the operator A is the infinitesimal generator of the process X. And so to speak, the operator BJ, which appears on the next page, next slide, is sort of uh, measures of the connection between X and, X and Y. So there is a the, the observation function and also the uh, an, a part which, which tells you about the correlation between the two noises. So, the, as I said, A is the infinitesimal generator of the process Xt, <coughs> and Bj, sort of this is the observation function, 
And this, this has to do with the correlation between the two noises. Okay, so the, it is deriving this equation is rather easy. I give you the, the, the main step. So first you develop the product z tilde t pi of xt using Ito's formula. Okay, this is a simple exercise. And then you note the following four facts. So first of all, if psi t is ft measurable, and you want to compute under p tilde the conditional expectation given of, of psi t given the observation up to some future time t plus s, it is the same as this conditional expectation. And, this is, and the reason for that is that yt is a filtration of a Brownian motion under p tilde. So this is rather easy to check. And then once you have this, you see that, of course, the conditional expectation commute with a ds integral. <coughs> and because of this property, then at each time s, you just have pi s of, of psi, ds. Then you, the, this conditional expectation also commute with the dyj integral. I mean, this is rather, rather obvious. And uh, uh, with respect to, to, to v, if you take a stochastic interval with respect to, to v, which is uh, another brown motion dependent of y, then this conditional expectation is zero. Because of the because the two stochastic integrals, are, I mean, with, with, because this stochastic integral is orthogonal in L two with any to any stochastic integral with respect to dy. Okay, so so using this, you you just easily uh, obtain this this Zakai equation. Okay, so <coughs> now if so the, the measure pi t this is not exactly the conditional law of xt given yt. It is what is usually called the anormalized conditional law of xt given yt. Indeed, from the Kalyan-Porsche-Tribble formula, which I had written a couple of slides ago, uh, the conditional expectation of phi of xt given yt is just pi t of phi by the no, normalized by pi t of one. Okay. So once you know the Random measure pi t, you, you, you deduce easily by this uh, normalization the, condition, the wished conditional law. Okay, now if I replace, so I had written my Zakai equation with a test function phi of x, now I change it to a test function which depends both on t and x. And for some reason I prefer to change notation and and write u of tx instead of phi of tx, then the Zakai equation reads like this. And it's, it's quite almost obvious that the only uh, additional thing is the ds derivative of us in, in this uh, here. OK, so you have this additional term. And, and except from that, it is the same equation. OK, so now. In a way, if we want to compute the conditional law, we would have to, to solve a, a stochastic partial differential equation. Now, uh, when I say compute, of course, it's uh, OK. Uh, OK, this equation is not a practical uh, tool to compute anything, but they are by now well established particle filtering algorithm, which give reasonably good, ap good approximation of the conditional law of the solution of this, uh, uh, if you like, of this quantity. OK, now uh, one remark. Of course, the only case where the solution of this filtering problem is, is sort of easy, because it, it, uh, you not only to have to solve finite dimensional equations, not quite the only case, but on, the on, almost only case is a case where x0 is Gaussian. The two uh, drifts f and h are linear in x, and the diffusion matrix does not depend upon x. Then the pair x y is, Gauss, is a Gaussian process, and of course, since if the pair is Gaussian, then it's, it's clear that the 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 conditional law pi bar t is Gaussian. So uh, the well-known Kalman-Bucy filter 
uh, give you the formulas for the evolution of the conditional law and the conditional covariance matrix, which in fact turns out, I mean, the conditional law is random, depends upon the observation, but the conditional covariance matrix is deterministic. Now, there are, there are very few extensions of this kind of result. Lipser and Shayaev has introduced so-called conditional Gaussian situations, but that's sort of very restrictive. And there is one, it's a whole, uh, there is one field of Benesh has invented uh, once, has found one situation where you have a finite dimensional filter which is outside the, the linear Gaussian world. Okay, but, and you can do a little bit of combination of those things. I, I have an old paper with Ulrich Hausmann on this, but you don't go very far. Okay, so now, now I want to, to, so now I have this equation, which is uh, an equation for a, a measure valued process. And I want to establish uniqueness of the solution. Uh, well, I mean, the idea, of course, is that I want to make sure that this, that this uh, equation characterizes my unnormalized uh, measure P. That is, if I take any solution of this equation and then I renormalize it, I want to make sure that this is exactly the conditional I'm looking for. I mean, it's a natural question. OK, of course, it's a linear SPD, so it should not be too hard. But still, I mean, uh, OK, so how, what can we do? OK, before I, uh, so one tool I will use to, for this purpose is to introduce the, the following class of stochastic processes. So given a deterministic bounded functions of time, bounded function of time with values in Rm, <coughs> I introduce the complex valued process, which is exponential i integral from 0 to t of rs dys plus 1 half integral of rs norm squared ds. So that theta t is just, is in fact a martingale. Okay, I recall that I'm, okay, I'm, I'm working only on the, the measure, the transform measure p tilde, okay? <coughs> so dy, this is Brownian motion. So this is a martingale. And uh, okay, so i, of course, is square root of minus 1. This is the complex valued process. And the, I could, of course, uh, delete the i and put one minus 1 half here. But, but then my theta t would be in all LP. Here, the big advantage of introducing this complex valued process is that uh, I, get something, I get something which is bounded. And that's, that will be uh, a very comfortable uh, in, the, in the next derivation. So now if I consider the set, OK, I fix a time capital T, and I consider the set of random variables theta t when r runs over this <coughs> set of functions, then this set is total in, in, in the set of random variables yt in the following sense. If I take any integrable random variable which is y capital T measurable and which is such that e tilde of theta t x is zero for all theta t in that set, then x is zero almost surely. I mean, this is something which is well known. The idea of introducing this, um, this kind of uh, uh, process uh, for the purpose which I, I'm going to use it for a, is due originally to Krilov and Rozovsky. OK, so now, now I, <coughs> now you remember I had, I, I have this, pi t of u t is just a one dimensional uh, my martingale, which, which is or Ito process, if you like. And this is another semi martingale, I mean, in fact, a martingale. So, of course, using Ito's formula, I can compute, I mean, I can develop the product theta t pi t of ut. Okay? And I get, <coughs> I get this. So, of course, uh, the theta t introduces a, a new term in the dy integral. 
There is an, uh, and there is another term in the DS integral due to the, uh, uh, I mean, due to the correlation, I mean, sort of e to additional term, if you like. Okay, so now, now I have the following facts. Suppose now that ut solves this, okay, this, you see, this dt ut plus at ut plus i sum over j of rjt bjt ut equals zero for t between zero and capital T, and new capital T equals phi. Okay, this is, <coughs> this is a, a backward parabolic PDE, which is, which is well posed because, okay, this, you can think that this is a, a Laplace operator, although it may be degenerate, it need not be elliptic, but uh, uh, I mean, read, I mean, so d, dt ut dut dt plus Laplace uh, equals zero. This equation is, is well posed in the reverse direction, okay, in the backward di direction of time. So this is, a, uh, this is intuitively a well posed equation. I fix the final condition, okay? Now, if I have this, suppose I can, uh, I can solve this equation, then, <coughs> and, and, and the solution is good enough so that I can uh, plug it here and, and this holds, and of course this term vanishes, and then this is a local martingale. Now, if in addition, e tilde of the square root of the integral of the square <coughs> of this guy is finite, for all j between 1 and m, then this local martingale is a martingale, okay? And then I can take the expectation, and then I get that, okay, that this, oops, there is one, uh, this should not be there. So this product is a P tilde martingale, and the expectation at time capital T equals the expectation at time zero. Okay, this is, okay, we, we, without, if I had this, true without the square root, <coughs> then I would have a square integrable martingale. And here, of course, I'm using the Birkholder Davis inequality for p equals one, okay, which tells me that the expectation of the absolute value of the soup <coughs> over t of this guy between t between zero and capital T <coughs> is bounded by, by this quantity. So if this is finite, then, the local, then it's easy to show that the local martingale is indeed the martingale. Okay, so then I have this equality, and then, and then of course, maybe it's better because if I change slide, you won't see any more, oops. So maybe I can write just a small thing on the board. Now, I guess you probably you understand the, the uniqueness argument, it's very easy. So suppose I have two solutions, oops, I have two solutions. Pi one and pi two of of the Zaka equation, of course, with the same initial condition. Pi pi zero, pi naught. Uh, of course, I take this as uh, deterministic. This is just uh, the law of x naught. Uh, there is no observation at time zero. And uh, so if I take two such solutions, then, of course, they will satisfy e tilde of theta t pi 1 capital T of phi equals e tilde of theta t Pi 2t of phi. Now, if this is true for all theta t in my set st, which I had before, if you like, this means for all r <coughs> in L infinity, then, then I have that pi 1t of phi equals pi 2t of phi for uh, almost surely. And then if I have this for, uh, of course, uh, 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 a rich enough class of, function, of smooth functions phi, then I get that the two random measures by 1t 
are the same, and this is true for all t, then I have my uniqueness. Okay, so this is essentially this is the, the basic argument, which is not due to me, but I, I, I will explain what we do next. But okay, this is something. Okay, so this is. I have written here what, what I have explained on the board. Okay, uh, and then what we get is uniqueness of the solution of the Zakai equation in the space of measure value processes, which satisfies some, some condition uh, which ensure the, implies that this is satisfied. Okay, so if you see that if my if uh, if u of tx is bounded, and also here there is a in this operator there is a first order der derivative. So if also the coefficients are bounded, and the u to, together with its first order derivative are bounded, then <coughs> then uh, here what is inside here is bounded by by constant time. Okay, this is bounded. And, and then this is bounded by constant time pi t of 1 squared, okay? Then if I, I can take the soup t between 0 and capital T of pi t of, of 1 squared, I take it out of the, of, of the integral, and that be, because of the square root, I just need a condition on the expectation of the soup over t of pi t of 1. So this is what is explained here. So as I said already, this I already said, so if under some uh, good conditions, I only, this, I only need this to be finite, okay? Okay, such a result has, okay, has been obtained by Alain ben Soussan in a book, Stochastic Control of Partial, Observ Partial Observable Systems. Okay, in his result, he has no ellipticity assumption, and uh, even more than that, he allows the coefficients f and, f and h to have linear growth, provided a, f, and h have bounded derivatives of order 1 and 2 with, with respect to the spatial variable. So um, what is nice is that that includes the case of the Kalman filter, because he can allow the linear growth of some coefficients. OK, uh, of course, this, you see that this uniqueness result, which I have just obtained, has been obtained via a duality argument. Okay, which, uh, so if you like, I don't know whether I should use the word duality or adjoint. The idea is that existence of a solution of the adjoint equation gives me uniqueness of the, of the original equation. Okay, so it, is, it is something like this. And, and the, trick, the trick of using this uh, theta t allows me to reduce to a uh, although I, my forward equation is a stochastic equation, <coughs> I can reduce to a backward deterministic PD. Okay, and, and of course, such duality argument is well known both in probability and in PDE. Okay, in, in PDE, you can get uniqueness of uh, forward linear equation by using, uh, uh, okay, it not need to be forward, it could be elliptic equation. Okay, you can get uniqueness uh, of an equation via your existence of a solution of an adjoint equation. And, and of course, be, it's interesting to note that so you don't need uniqueness of the, of the adjoint equation, you need only existence. And, and the more regularity you have on this e solution of the adjoint equation, the better is your uniqueness result, because it gives you a uniqueness result for, in a larger class of possible solutions. Okay? And of course, in probability, this is also known. I mean, uh, uh, if, if you have a, you, you know, for solution of Martingale problems or Markov processes, the existence of an adjoint process gives you uniqueness of the law of the original problem. Okay, so uh, now what do we want to do? Okay, so this is, I spent already uh, more than half of my time on something <laughs> which I have not really contributed. <laughs> well, except a little bit something on like a question long time ago. Uh, now, now it's quite natural to generalize the above filtering problem as follows. So why not have all coefficients depend on the observed process? 
it should, should not be uh, forbidden. And here, okay, here I have uh, something a bit uh, special. Um, okay, here I can, I can consider this problem where the matrix K need not be invertible for all SY. For instance, okay, in, in the, the simplest example I have in mind is that suppose, suppose Y uh, is one dimensional and you want one, uh, Y to live on the interval 0, 1 and the, the, the drift of Y pushes you inside the interval and you want the K to vanish on the boundary so that it stays in the interval. So if you consider this, this kind of uh, problem, then a filtering problem, uh, then K may vanish at some point. So this is not covered by a usual uh, uh, theory of filtering. But uh, OK, in the case without correlation between the noises, when G bar is 0, uh, I have studied this uh, a couple of years ago with some collaborator. Uh, and uh, okay, and here, here we, we one of the goal is to is to consider this with correlated noise. Okay, so in this case, the Zakai equation takes a more general form, which is like this. There is an inverse which may not exist, but this is, but this difference is of the form k times something. So this this makes necessary some sense. And oops, and the 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 operator bj, which is here, is the one uh, that we had before, but with h replaced by h2. OK, so now, for this kind of Zakai equation, the above uniqueness argument will not work. Indeed, you see all coefficients. OK, now there is something I want to, maybe it's obvious, maybe not. So maybe I just, so for instance, the, the operator a, was <coughs> is is now a s phi? What is this? This is sum of a j of f j of s x y s d phi d x i of x plus the same thing with the second order term. But what I just want to to stress is that here, of course, the the variable x and y play completely different role. This ys, this is just you condition upon ys, so this is fixed, this is given. So it's a pr this process is there. <coughs> and, uh, uh, and, and while the xs is replaced by the variable x, this is just kept as a, as a stochastic process. So all the coefficients in my equation, all the coefficients of a and b depend at each time t on yt, or each time s at y on ys. So therefore, if you think of the backward PDE I had for my U, so I solve the backward PDE from capital T back to zero, and of course at some intermediate time T, of course the solution will depend on the, all the future of Y. So clearly, this guy will not be adapted. You, can, you cannot write, write a little formula for this, okay? Because this is adapted to the past, <coughs> uh, Pi t also is adapted to the past, but u is adapted to the future uh, of of my of a certain let's say Brownian motion. Okay, so that breaks down completely. Okay, so now I will in, in next I will I will I will forget about this complication for simplicity of the exposition. I come back to the original Zakai equation. The same as before, but with coefficients depending on y, OK, at each time. OK, so now what can you do? So I have this problem that uh, uh, I, want to, I want you to have some, uh, some resemblance with the ut I had before, the solution of, uh, of this backward PDE, but I want you to be adapted to the past at each time t. So what can I do? This is, now this is the theory of backward SDE or here it backward SPDE, but let me just, because maybe not everybody has heard about that, let me give a very, very, very uh, elementary introduction to the topic. So for a minute, 
forget about PDEs, suppose I just have an ODE, even a one-dimensional ODE, <coughs> and so my, if you like the, the U here, if you forget that it's a solution of a PDE, you think that it's just uh, a solution of a backward equation, one-dimensional, starting from a final value which is fixed, this is the function phi which is given, and it, is a, it solves an equation of the form z prime t equals minus f of y t z t, where y is a brown motion. So, of course, at each time t, as I said, z t will be a function of all the y between y s, s between t, cap, little t and capital T. And my problem is to transform that backward ODE into, in, into a backward SDE, but whose solution would be at each time t adapted to the past of y. Is that at all possible? The answer is yes. This is the content of the theory of backward of BSDE, backward as stochastic differential equation. So the problem is now the difference between uh, uh, this is different from a traditional SDE because I start from a final, final condition and I run the thing backward. Okay, this is one thing, but uh, uh, essentially. The solution is not one process, but a pair of processes. So a pair z of t, v of t, okay, which solve this thing. So you see, instead of having just z prime equals minus this, if, if, if v is zero, if v would be zero, then of course I would be back with this, this system, but I have an a priori non-zero v, and the idea is that adding the stochastic integral term <coughs> that stochastic integral term and allowing to choose freely the process V permits to force the solution to be adapted to the past of Y. That's the idea. Okay, let me give another, uh, because I think, okay, here, of course, this is what I have to face in my case. Here, the, 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 non -non the problem adaptation comes from the coefficient of the function F, but it could be, and maybe it's simpler to understand, that the y enters the final condition. So let me give another example of the same type, but uh, somewhat simpler, I think, in a sense. So again, everything is one dimensional on this slide. We go back to BSPD on the next slide. So suppose I have a final condition psi, which is a function of the so final condition at time capital T, so which is a function of my Brownian motion on the interval zero capital T, any functional of any nice function of this brown, of such a brown motion, well, nice, not necessarily nice, but should be square integrable. Okay. okay, if you don't want it to be square integrable, of course there are some extensions, but the classic, most classical theory is, a, is a, in the case where it is square integrable. And suppose that f is Lipschitz, then we are looking for a pair of progressively, progressively measurable processes x t v t, which is such that I have the following. So xt is xi plus integral from little t to capital T of f of x as ds minus integral from little t to capital T of vs dys. Okay? So the, there is a unique and the, the by now well established theory of this kind of uh, equation is that there, it says there is a uni, unique such pair xv of pro progressively measurable processes which satisfy, moreover, <coughs> uh, this uh, moment condition. Expectation of the soup of x t squared plus the integral of v t squared is finite. And note that here, here I can control the soup, but for v concerning v, I control only uh, some moment of the integral of v t squared. OK. Note that x capital T is a function of my uh, uh, Brown motion between zero and capital T for any t strictly between zero and capital T, x t is a function of the past of y because it's progressively measurable, so it must be a function of past of y, and 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 in particular for t equals zero, x zero is deterministic. So in the case where f is identically zero, the solution is trivial. It's x t equals expectation of xi given y t. Okay, and in a sense. The idea, okay, you, you can approximate the solution, at least V. It's a little more complicated to, to, to get uh, um, an approximation of, I mean, at least X. Concerning V, it's a little more tricky. 
But concerning x, somehow what you could do, you, 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 you could derive a, an approximation of the solution xt as follows. You, you, <coughs> you start from capital T, you, you, you solve the ODE x dot equals minus f of x on a small time interval. Then you take the condition, the expectation of what you have gotten, and, and then uh, so you alternate solving the ODE and projecting on the uh, current sigma algebra. And somehow, somehow intuitively for me, what, uh, what the solution of this guy does is uh, somehow it, it, it combines in continuous time following the ODE x dot equals minus of of x with projecting on the, uh, with, with, with taking the conditional expectation somehow. Okay, so this was just a short introduction to, to this topic of backward SDE. And now, okay, so this, uh, I will give you reference, uh, a couple of references at the end. Okay, this topic started in 19, the first paper was written in 1990. The idea is due to my former student, Shige Pang, uh, and we wrote together the first paper, which appeared in 1990. And since then, it has uh, exploded as a, because it has connection with, uh, with PDEs, with, uh, with uh, semi-linear PDEs, with uh, stochastic control, with finance, with a lot of topics. And, and so there have been a lot of interest. And now there is a huge literature. There are international conferences regularly on this topic. There are uh, many, uh, many, many, I mean, hundreds of papers, uh, many books, etc. OK, anyway. So now I want to concentrate on stochastic backward stochastic partial differential equation because among the generalization of the very naive uh, thing I, I, I introduced on the previous two slides, <coughs> among the many generalizations, <coughs> there is the thing that you can do it with for backward SPD. So, so as I said, I, I, I go back to my filtering problem. But now I assume that k is the identity, h1 is 0, h2 equals h. So I go back to or the original Zakai equation uh, just for simplicity of the exposition, but with coefficients depending only upon yt. OK, so now, <coughs> so you remember I had, I had my backward PDE, OK, which was written uh, some time ago on a previous slide. And now in, I introduce the backward SPDE which will be a, a complex valued backward SPDE, which, is be, which will be of this form. <coughs> so DUT plus ATUT plus the sum of those guys, always all that DT equals sum of VJT, DYJT. And I fix the final condition, which is uh, the smooth function phi. So in fact, this is a comp this is a, a complex valued uh, SPDE, which is equivalent to a system of two real valued SPDE. So I can write UT to be U1T plus I times U2T. <coughs> and, then, and then, of course, it's, it's clear from what is written here. There, is, there, is, there are I's here and here. It is clear that. <coughs> that uh, u1 should solve this equation and u2 so should solve this equation. And now what, you do, what we do, <coughs> we are going to use results for similar backward SPDs, but which are written, of course, for real valued backward SPDs. So we just have to adapt the arguments to this situation with those two coupled, the system of two coupled uh, BSDs, BSPDs. And OK, this works. You see, what is important is that here, so here, here you have a second order operator. And OK, the V, the v here appears with a first order. But what is also very important is that uh, here you have, you, you have a, the coupling between U1 and U2 comes through these two terms here and the similar two terms here. So this is. Uh, how they are coupled, and the fact that here you have only a uh, uh, first order operator in front of u2 while you, you have a second order operator in front of u1, 
uh, the zero order operator in terms of V2J while you have a first order operator in front of V1J. I mean, I, I, this situation is, is, is important to allow us to adapt the uh, some, non some already known results to this situation of, of two coupled uh, things. Okay, so, so of course, uh, so the unknowns are U1, U2, V1J, V2J for J between uh, 1 and M, and I forgot to write, okay, I should have adopted the convention of summation of upon repeated indices. I, uh, here, of course, the sum over J is, is missing here and here. Okay. So, of course, my final condition is real, so the U1 <coughs> capital T is phi, U2 capital T is zero. Okay, so uh, if we adapt to this system, non results for BSPDs, backward SPDs, we can show that if all our coefficients are bounded together with the first derivatives of order up to n in x, and phi is smooth, then the above system of BSPDs has a solution such that for i equals 1, 2. If this norm index n denotes the subref, the norm is the subref space Hn, so functions which are L2, and all the derivatives up to order n, partial derivatives up to order n in x are also in L2, then we get that we get the following uh, statement that the solution. Uh, uh, satisfies for i equals 1, 2 that the expectation of the sup t between 0 and capital T of the hn norm squared of uit plus the integral of the hn uh, norm of vi squared dt okay, the t is missing here this should be finite okay, of course one important thing is that we don't want to mm, assume strong electricity, okay? In fact, the strong electricity in this case would, would, would follow if you assume that, you remember there is sigma, sigma transposed, and, and, and there is also sigma bar, sigma bar transposed. But the sigma bar have appears in the first order, in, the, in this operator, is first order, and, uh, okay, uh, I cannot really explain, but somehow, uh, okay, this should forget. I mean, the, the strong electricity here would, would mean that uh, this matrix should be, um, should be less, uh, bigger than or equal to C times the identity. Okay, but we don't want to make such an assumption. And of course, we, if we don't have electricity assumption, then we need, we need our coefficients to have some regularity. Because, uh, I mean, you have to pay something if you want to solve a PD. I mean, you, you, you cannot do things without any kind of assumption. Okay, so this is the first result. Now, okay, now we need an ad hoc Ito formula because, because now we have, okay, as, uh, as was explained here, so we want to, okay, we want to, to, to write an Ito formula for that guy. But this first for pi t of ut, but now ut solves the BSPD. So it, it's a little more tricky than uh, what we had before. Uh, now, we need to develop, to, to develop pi t of ut in case ut is, takes this form. Okay? Before, we didn't have this. We just had something which was in C12. Now we have this guy. And we have to assume, you have to make sure that the process ATUT plus C sigma T plus BJT lambda JT, which will show up because of a, a correlation between the two stochastic integrals, and, and that guy also, that all, all these are, uh, are CB of RD valued. Okay, CB or... Uh, Okay, could be, we, we could assume some uh, uh, polynomial growth, but then we have to, of course, to assume that the, our measure value process pi t <coughs> integrates some polynomial. But okay, so here I just stick to the simplest case where everything, where all our functions that we want to integrate against our random measure are bounded. 
And so the formula we have, <coughs> given that uh, pi t solves the Zakai equation, is, is this formula. So pi t of u t is pi 0 of u 0 plus integral of pi s of a s u s plus that was uh, uh, in, in the case where u was deterministic, we had this, which we called, of course, d s u s in that case. And now we have, uh, uh, in addition, <coughs> the thing due to the, <coughs> okay, we, we have in addition uh, that term. And we have, of course, the stochastic term. Okay, so, so now we, we, we assume that the above assumptions hold for some n larger than 2 plus d over, d over 2. So this, this is to ensure that the function, that the solution together with its uh, first and second order derivative in the x are bounded functions. And then we can show that if u is a solution of the above BSPDE, <coughs> then I have this, uh, the differential of this product is theta t times sum over j of pi t of this guy. So bj ut plus vjt. This is the, the set, uh, second part in the solution of the BSPDE plus, <coughs> plus the i rjt ut. DJT. Okay, so now under, under the above assumptions, assuming that maybe I didn't say that all coefficients are bounded. So if we have that expectation of the sub t between 0 and capital T of pi t of 1 squared is finite, then we get that this is a martingale, or if you like that this stochastic integral is, is uh, e, e, this local martingale is a martingale. I mean, the stochastic integral integrating this gives a martingale. Uh, okay. Note that in the previous case, I didn't have this square. And of course, this is due to the fact that in the previous case, that term was deterministic. Okay. So here it is random and the, the, the soup over x of those quantities is only, uh, is only uh, square integrable. Okay, I don't have, uh, it's not bounded. So, so I need a, a little more, I, I, I need a, a restriction compared to what I had before. So now, so the theorem, <coughs> which is by, oh, I forgot to say, at start, that it's, it was written on the first slide, but I forgot to say joint work with Dan Krizan from Imperial College. So this result by Dan and myself says that if the coefficients a, f, and j are of class c and b, as function of x for some n larger than 2 plus d over 2, um, okay, then the Zakai equation has a unique solution in the class of yt adapted measurable measure valued processes satisfying for all t the expectation of the soup of this squared is finite. And of course, it is easy to establish that the, that the unnormalized conditional law in our filtering problem satisfies this condition. So it, it's a good enough uh, class for uniqueness. Okay, so that's what I wanted to say. Here are a few references. So this is a book by my collaborator and someone else on, on filtering. Uh, this is a book I was quoting earlier by Ben Soussan, where he establishes this uniqueness. These are the two papers on BSPDs, uh, which, which we are using, I mean, essentially we are using, we are adapting their proof to, to our situation of two coupled, uh, of uh, complex value this BSPDs, if you like. And uh, okay, and this is uh, the reference to the original paper which started the topic of backward stochastic differential equation. Okay, thank you.